Amazing! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the world-renowned creator of Luminous Res and Space Channel 5, Tetsuyo Mizuguchi. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. What, uh, wow, what, what did we just see? So uh, this is my new game, uh, Child of Eden. And uh, it's a based on the synesthesia, the connection of different senses through different stimulations. Um, I adapted this principle to music, shapes and colors for the, my game. And uh, in association with the uh, Microsoft uh, Kinect camera, we are able to provide this sensory experience. Well, thank you for kicking off the show. That was incredible. Wow. Tetsuya Mizuguchi, everyone. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Right on. I touched the glove. Hello, everyone. I'm Joel McHale, and I am so excited to be hosting the Ubisoft E3 press conference again, because at the end of last year's presentation, I walked out of here with a duffel bag full of free games. So, yes. Uh, uh, and so if this year goes as well, all my Christmas shopping will be done in one afternoon. No, okay. Uh, Ubisoft told me that I would be presenting games you can feel, which is intriguing, except that uh, most of the games that I typically play involve someone getting stabbed in the neck or burnt alive. So we'll see. Uh, but I think the point that they're uh, trying to make in these games, the, the games that they're developing are uh, they're developing at an incredible rate and becoming so emotionally involving that when I'm playing them, it's almost like I I'm spending time with another human and not just sitting in a dark room trying to ignore my family. So thank you, Ubisoft. Um, and today, uh, you will see how Ubisoft is enabling you to really dive into its creative worlds and be completely immersed. Uh, you'll see how your body is now an integral part of the video game experience. It's no longer just about sitting in front of the screen and exercising your thumbs on a little game pad. So sit back and enjoy the ride of your life. And I'm going to go work on my duffel bag. for whom we assassins fight.
Ezio Auditor. Brave of you to stand alone against me, but also quite foolish. Assassin. Hey man. Hi everyone. My name is Vincent Vincent Pombriand. I'm the producer, and this is Patrick Plour. He's our uh, game director. So, in this new chapter of Assassin's Creed, the ongoing struggle between assassins and Templars is escalating, and we reach new heights. Ezio Auditore da Firenze, our main character, is back. He's now legendary, although. After what he went through in Assassin's Creed 2, he feels a little bit tired. He's now a leader, although he's still learning. He's much wiser, but still makes mistakes. But one thing's for sure is that he's deadlier than ever and still a ladies' man. You don't need to ask. <laughs> One should always have the freedom to choose. What's that? <sighs> Probably just training exercises. I have to find Mario and rally the troops. My men are in the courtyard. I aim to lead them around back and flank our attackers. Stay out of sight. Adio has become a legend, highly regarded by his peers, and actively hunted by the Templars. He's their main target, and they will go as far as to attack his villa here in Monte Regioni. It's the Borgia! How did we not see this? They must have passed to the east during the night. We need to hold them off until the townspeople have escaped. I will take care of it. Use the cannons above the ramparts. I intend to need a frontal assault. Do you have it? I am keeping it safe. The Borgia must not be allowed to breach the walls until everyone is safely away. Insieme, per la victoria. Insieme. Uncle, be careful. I will. One of our objectives is to exploit the full potential of the horse. Players will be able to venture inside the walls of the city, and in the final game, advanced horse fighting will be available. Situation call for drastic measures. We're striving to give players more memorable moments filled with different experiences, such as this canon gameplay sequence. Signore! 
gameplay diversity is still a priority for Brotherhood. This ballistic gameplay is just one example. Ezezio will have multiple new gadgets and machinery at his disposal. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, we want you to take the offensive. Strike first, strike fast will be the key. To achieve this, we're giving the player new moves and new fight mechanics to quickly take care of multiple opponents. And we've made the AI way more aggressive. Cesare Borgia, Ezio's new nemesis. I know you're there, Ezio! The Pope told me about you and your little group of assassins. Atlas! Give me the gun, his friend passion for us! We've had too much bloodshed! I think the cleansing is in order. So consider this an invitation from my family to yours. So, Ezio has lost this battle, but you'll see that the war is far from over. A new order will rise, and a brotherhood will be necessary in order to, to strike at the heart of the enemy in Rome, center of power and corruption. I would like that now. Uh, wow, I, I was actually a, a part of the Brotherhood for a short period of time, uh, but I kept, uh, my wrist daggers kept sticking in my kids, so it was bad. Um, can I still be in the Brotherhood? Well, actually, the casting for the Brotherhood is already over, so I'm Crap. sorry, Joel. Can but, I get a robe, maybe? But you're in luck, All right. because the Templars are recruiting in their fight against the Assassins. For the first time ever, you can play a key role in this fight by proving your skills and abilities against other players around the world. We're introducing a fresh and innovative multiplayer experience to the Assassin's Creed franchise. Come and put your skills to the test this week at E3 at our booth. Yeah, all right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you all so right. much. Thank you, everyone. Wow. Thanks right, for nice playing the game. Lucky guy. All right. Now it's time to head back to the present and into the heart of a 21st century urban Jungle, behold. So let's rock and roll.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome two-time snowboarding Olympic gold medalist and skateboarding pro athlete, Sean White. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Sean. Good to see you. <laughs> Great to see you. So you've had a decent year. Uh, you just won your 10th <laughs> <Went all> right. <laughs> Winter X Games gold medal, and then you went to this thing called the Olympics and won your second gold medal in <laughs> snowboarding, which is two more than my current total. Uh, so it's been a pretty good year. Yeah, it's been wild. I mean, I, I can't honestly describe what I've been through. I mean, from Vancouver to X Games, everything, it's, it's been a trip, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, I've done more, but uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you, uh, you, you um, well, I gotta read the thing here, but uh, so would you, oh, come over here to these white cubes that they're bringing in so fast. <laughs> so these are the Ubisoft white cubes brought from France. Uh -huh. and, um, very nice. Yeah, aren't they great? You can tell they're French. Yeah, and they're nice. very comfortable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you like I'm a lot taller than you? Yeah. That's uh, nice. <laughs> all right, so Sean, uh, <laughs> Winter is over, the snow has melted, uh, mm. snowboarding is not very exciting on gravel and dirt, no. um, but what people may not know about you is that off-season you are a painter. No, uh, you, in the off-season you're a professional <laughs> skateboarder with uh, a ton of medals in vert skating. Yeah, I mean, I started skateboarding and, and snowboarding basically when the same time I was six years old and um, I don't know, I've always been wanting to compete at the same level in both, and so skateboarding has just been my, my, my love off the mountain, and, and yeah, for years now I've been competing in both sports. And, uh, wow. And for, when you were six, you were like, I need to have video games made yeah, after me. Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> and that's why you're working with Ubisoft, yeah. and uh, so you, you've made a skateboarding game with them, obviously. Yeah, it's been a trip. I mean, a couple years in the making, and um, I don't know, this is our third game, so I, I've definitely Jeez. felt like... I'm really getting a grasp of what's possible and what I really want to achieve with the game. But uh, uh, so the you're game's heavily, impressive. you're heavily involved in yeah. the making of the game, in all aspects of the making of the game. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm doing voiceover stuff in the studio, motion capture out in Montreal, and then uh, even reading the script. You know, we had a, a new guy come yeah. in and write some really funny jokes. Did they motion it. capture your hair? They tried, man. Wow. It was, so, too, ex it was too extravagant. It was, well, let's, yeah, it is glorious. How can you capture that? You shoot, do you have a shampoo <laughs> contract yet? I assume? Let's talk turkey all later. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, speaking of uh, all the people that you're working with, let's bring out some of the creators, or the creators, uh, Nick Harper and Alexi Jolie de Sotel. Guys, yeah. <laughs> come on out to the white cubes. Thanks, Pick a cube. Yeah, I don't know. Probably. This one, this tall one's for you. <laughs> No, you can, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, man. Hey, man. You guys are nice. Good to see you. I'll right on. here if you want to. All right, so uh, we, know this, uh, we know this is not mm -hmm. a, uh, a much more, it's much more than your standard just skateboarding game. Uh, yeah. How did you come up with the concept? So when we started the game, we met Sean and other skateboarders, and we spoke to them and asked what was their inspiration, trying to understand how they see the world. Mm -hmm. Sean was able to give us a lot of insight from a skater's point of view. Yeah, I mean, basically it's strange. I mean, the way you would look at a street, I would look at it completely different. I mean, I would, I would see rails I could grind, things I could jump off of. I mean, it's completely different. So that's, that's where the whole idea of, like, change the world through skateboarding. You know, you really can interact in the environment and do whatever you want to do. Yeah, so from there we wanted to create a world that could be a playground for gamers with this kind of creative and individualistic attitude. Anything goes and there aren't any limits. Right. Limits are always a bad thing, for example. <laughs> I have a restraining order against my mother-in-law. <laughs> it's a whole long story. But anyway, uh, uh, let's, see, let's see all the, um, let's see, we're going to debut right here uh, all the hard work you guys have been doing. Yeah. So Nick and Alexi, please give us uh, the demo of Sean White skateboarding. OK, cool, thanks. So uh, before we start, as Sean said, everything is an opportunity. Our game needed to deliver these opportunities in a new way. We do this with what we call transformation. It's the ability for the player to transform the environment in real time as he plays the game. So as you play the game, you skate to create your own twisted reality. So because we have this world that is a before and an after world, we need to have a, an explanation as to how it comes about. So we do that with what we call the ministry. It's an authority who is intent on removing fun, passion, and risk from society. Your job as the player, as a skater, is to bring that life and color back to the world. 
Dude, look around. This place is covered dipstick ministry propaganda. See if you can get this place looking right. Good luck. So this is the ministry world that you can see at the start of the demo. You can see it's lacking in life. It's devoid of passion, fun, excitement. So the Ooh, quest... Jim. If we're going to have any shot at fixing this place, you're going to need these brainwashed locals to snap out of it and start there thinking I am. straight. If you didn't know, uncanny. That's, that's me. <laughs> Your hair is luxurious. <laughs> right? <laughs> So you can see immediately as Alexi tricks, he's bringing the life and the color back. You can see that the shops are reviving, the trees are blooming into leaf, uh, the people are being influenced, um, everything's coming to life. But more than that, it's also that we're creating new skating opportunities. So a kicker pops in to enable Alexi to jump over this taxi. And here, the wall transforms so it grows, makes a different shape creating different skating opportunities for the player. And it's all about trying to create these opportunities. Do you get hassled by the cops? All the time. <laughs> in real life or in the game? <laughs> Nick, do you skateboard? I try. I'm weak. Right. That's why I have a video game. Right. So the cool innovation for us is what we call shaping. It's the ability to take an object and to bend it in real time under full analog control. So as a result, Alexi is able to make his own skate line. He's making a completely new skate line that is unique to him and how he wants to play the game. And you're able to go back and reshape it and transform it again and again until you got it the way you want it. Exactly. But shaping's not just about rails. You can also take the ground and you can morph it up or down. As Alexis demonstrated, he's gone down, finding a new area to skate wow. in underneath the subway. Have you actually ever done that? Jumped that a subway That was actual train? motion capture right oh, there. Oh, right there, yeah. <laughs> Way to get the train. You better hit this one, man. <laughs> no pressure. So one thing that was really important to us, whilst we have this innovation of transformation and uh, shaping, we really wanted to have a solid skateboarding base as the foundation for the game. So we worked really close with Sean to make sure that the weight of the skater was right, the placement of the feet on the board was good, the way you moved, the animation, so that you could tell the difference between a pop shove it or a kick flip or an impossible, for example. I just like that out of every game I've ever played, it's always just been your set level, and this is just ever changing. You know, you can always adapt and change and do whatever you want to do over and over again. Yeah, in fact, Alexi can demonstrate now. He can take that original rail and he can reshape it to create a completely different skate line so he can go to a completely different location of the map. And you find as you play through the game, you end up making this, this unique skate park to you as you're playing, and it's really, you know, what's individual to you as a player. Uh. There you are. That's Again. Right. That's the real. When was that? That was a, a skate park in Montreal. While I was doing the voiceover. We went and shot that footage. Nice. So if you remember how the map looked at the start of the demo, it was really lacking in life. And if you see it now, we've brought all the trees, the life, the color, the excitement back to the city. And that's what we're trying to do, reviving this city. But we still have one more billboard to influence and a bit more of the demo to go. Yeah. <laughs> they gave me a smaller box in the end. Yeah, you got the little one. Yeah, we're bigger than you. Yeah. <laughs> it's much higher in rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Can you compound fracture your femur in this? <laughs> you basically just fall so hard that your guy explodes. Oh. <laughs> It seemed more reasonable for that. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot less hospital time if you just explode. Did you just finish all the... So you can see here, yeah, yeah, you can see we've got a massive transformations that also take place in the game, creating more opportunities. So now Alex is on the roof, he can look around and think, hang on a minute, maybe there's some gameplay I can go to over here. So you can take this rail, reach these rooftops up on the top left.
Can you change outfits? Yes. Multiple, multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> um, so finally, one thing that was really important to us is to get Sean's no. signature move, the armadillo, in the demo <laughs> and in the game. And hopefully Alexa's going to pull it off Let's right see now. Let's see. All right. No. I can do that in real life. Really? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Pretty cool to take what I'm doing and actually put it in the game, you know. But you didn't do that. that no, last week. How often are there massive <laughs> yeah. Last week, downtown <laughs> LA. Wow. Wow. Okay, so that's our demo. Make sure you come and check the game out at the Ubisoft booth this week. We also have the demo playable in uh, 3D and also fully playable on the Wii. Wow, it's everywhere. Oh. Thank you guys so Hope much. Hope you like it. Thanks. Sean White, everybody. Thanks, man. <laughs> Nick! Thanks. <laughs> wow. That is great. can fulfill my dream of being a skater without uh, skidding my knees and having to buy booze for teenagers. Um, thank you, you guys. Uh, of course, uh, and of course, thanks to Sean White. He'll be at the Ubisoft booth tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so, yeah, he's a really great guy. Um, wait till you meet him. Um, I, can't, I can't wait to play. 3D version. Anyway, uh, man, uh, we, we just keep seeing uh, so many cool new ways of, of playing pop up. It, it started with the Wii, uh, and now it's the DS. Uh, we got the Microsoft Kinect and Sony Move. The list continues. These technologies are adding a whole new dimension to video games. Uh, interfaces are evolving at all times, and I am talking right now. I hope that's cool. If I'm talking, and now people are screaming. Awesome. Oh, all right. Uh, it's attractive people running around. Hold on, Joe. Uh, the blue sharks. We're all. Jeez. Look out. Heads up. Just gonna hide. Are you tired or what? Jeez. Wow. Please don't kill me. Wow. It's attractive people fighting each other with. Come on, hurry up. One minute left. Three, two, one. Game over. So can I? I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come so, out. Oh yeah, we won. Sorry, ladies. Nice. Ah. Uh, wow, way to go. You you beat beat models. Uh, all right, um, <laughs> ladies and uh, you, so you guys won. Uh, all right, yes, keep scrolling. <laughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Gail Sadu, everyone, the creator of this game. Gail, what was that all about? Okay, that's <laughs> something lots of gamers have been waiting for. So it's a real live shooter that you can play at home with all your friends. Right. You get it? If my friends are models. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're not nearly as good a shape those people. Anyway, uh, tell me, if I play at home, will it hurt? No, don't worry. Don't what worry. What if I pistol whip someone? No, 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 don't worry. <laughs> no, don't worry. I, I just played with my kids before coming, and the death match we played together, all together, you know, it's harmless. Yeah, you played a death match with your kids. Yeah, yeah. A harmless sometimes. death you know, match. They love it, they love it. it <laughs> it's, you know, it's a combination of two worlds. Laser tag game, you can play at home anywhere you want, and a shooter game with real live accessories like this ammunition Oh, these pack. are the ammo, all right. Yeah. When you run out of ammo, you just go like this, bling, and you nice. pull up. So the chase has never been so real. This is, this is mine now. Yeah, you have it. Right. The, the other major addition is the Game Master, who challenges you, and, and it keeps track of your score. So wait, wait. You you have uh, it's in your computer as well. All right. It's very. It sounds very. Is this like a whole new type of video game? Yes. It's a video game you play away from the screen. You've seen us running everywhere. But the content you can create and share it with the community and your friends. Okay. So that's you know even more fun. And the other thing is we are creating a new gaming experiences. You know, it's game you can feel. So it's all about your body and your mind combined in one game. 
And just for you, I've created this uh, gameplay called Biathlon. I get to I'm play myself? To you. Yes. I love a show where I'm given a gun. So you're going um, to sweat a little bit. So I'm going to shoot suit. you now. This is going to yep. be awesome. Uh, how do I do it? OK, so it's simple. You got a gun? Yes. You got to switch it on. All right. Go. Yeah, it says go. So you're ready? Go okay, Now, all right, yes. it's all about running and aiming. You've got to go from this checkpoint, right, James, to the other one over there. OK. OK? And each time you take your checkpoint, you've got to scan it so it knows you've, right. you know, you've passed. And, and we're going to go back and forth. Back and forth. Yeah, it stages, you know, All right. Small. And then and <laughs> you've got to aim at the UB Connect. At the poor lady there. No, no, not the lady. The UB All right, Connect. the connector there. Yes. Oh, I see it. All right. OK. Simple. Speed. Very simple. Precision. I'm going to beat your ass. OK, I'm ready. I don't want to taunt you, but I think. All right, so all right, here we go. Wait, wait for the game master. He's gonna tell you. You wait for the game master. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. Player one, teammate one. All right. Tag. Player one, teammate two. Tag. Yes. Uh huh. All right. Yes. Okay. Player one, teammate three. Tag. Last one. Player one, teammates, four, <laughs> ten, race over. Pick, pick up one, yeah. So there is player yeah. one. Uh, that's right, I just beat the creator of his own game. You're nothing, you're garbage, go bury yourself. I feel like you let me win though, Gail. No, I, I let you win, you know. We all win, don't yeah, we? Yeah. Except so, for right there where <laughs> I beat you. So actually, <laughs> actually, you have to wait until the end of the year to play the game. And You'll find that across North America, with in the box two guns, right? Yeah, four of these tags, one UB Connect, and two harness. No models. No models. All right. <laughs> and you can play up to four versus four. Nice. And it all goes back into your computer, keeps track of everything, no matter where yeah. you're playing. Yeah. The game master challenges you, gives you gameplay, you know, keeps track of your score. You can't cheat. Wow. Yeah. All right. So wow. video game in real life. That's great. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, wow. That, Gail, this sounds amazing. Thank and, you. Uh, wow. Thank you. And thanks to your, uh, thank you, Gail. And thanks to your, uh, your mustache from the movie Maverick. Um, sounds very exciting. I haven't sweat this much in a suit since my uncle's funeral. I was a pallbearer. He was 400 pounds. So, um, uh, ladies, let's, let's hear it for one more time for Gail, everybody. Um, that was awesome. You know, I saw something very strange backstage uh, that they claim was not only a video game, but also an energy booster. I'm not sure how it works exactly, uh, but it's worth a shot. So let's bring up Tommy Francois to show us. Tommy? Yes. Hey, oh, everyone. my gosh. It's Johnny Rotten, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Can we go so over anyways, here? Yes, yes come, come to my right here. group of cubes. So just to answer your question, this is a game, but it's not only about having fun, it's also about feeling well. We call it energy, and as an entertainer, I'm sure you can relate to this because it deals with stress. Unfortunately, we all know about stress and the ne negative impacts it has on the way we behave, the way we feel, the way we interact with our friends. Actually, when we're stressed, we're, not, we're no longer creative as well. We die down as a creative person. Yes, I can relate. I would love to put a joke here, but I am too stressed out. <laughs> so um, how, how can your game uh, help with reducing stress? Is it some sort of black magic? Okay, no. Let or me... sleeping pills and booze? Not sleeping pills, not Dang booze. It. Let me show you how the magic works. Okay. All right, so step one, you can be the, the magician's hot assistant. You want me to lie Sit down? Sit down, yes, look okay. sexy like, a, like any assistant. All right, I'm just going to relax and focus. All right. This is how I like to relax. Leg spread. You look very relaxed. No. All right. Very sexy. <laughs> all right. So it all starts all right. with the energy sensor right here. Right. It tracks all of your body signals. Okay. You please hand your finger. Thank God it's my finger. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready to go. What were you all thinking? Right. All right. I, I'm ready to go. All right. What did you yell, sir? All, uh, right. all right. Here we go. So relax. I'm oh, there's me. This so is much you. more hair. Let's see what happens inside your body. 
Okay, I'm gonna write, all right. We're gonna start with a very simple breathing exercise. Okay. All you need to do is breathe in, breathe out. All right, focus on the cute bubble. It shows you the path to follow. The white dots right by it represent how well you're doing. Mm. All right, so remember, breathe in, breathe in, breathe out. Nice. You should all try it. I see some pretty tense faces out there. Up. Breathe in, breathe out. All right, watch it, watch it. You're Sorry. all over the place here. I'm distracted Try by your hair. Just focus. Sorry. Jeez. And breathe out. This game makes me feel like Mr. Miyagi and Karate Kid. That we can go to Lamaze class yeah. together. The whole. You really look like him. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me explain how this really wor works. When you breathe this way, you change the pattern of your heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Your heart communicates with your brain and they start to operate in harmony. This is called cardiac... I'm flatlining. <laughs> it's your brain, it's your brain. All right. <laughs> this is called cardiac coherence. Reaching this state allows you to rid yourself of the negative effects of stress on your mind huh. and body. Wow, so, I, I actually do kind of feel <laughs> strange relaxed in front of all of you. Yeah, okay. Uh, wow, <laughs> yes, that's great. Energy has an immediate effect but you'll feel the, the full effect if you practice over time, again right. and again, as anything in life. Right, 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 wow. I also have a, there's something else cool about the energy sensor right here. The way we designed it is that you can plug it into any computer. What does this mean? It means that you can level up anywhere you want. You can play at home, you can play at work, on the train, between meetings, at lunch. Wow. And basically, anytime you need a break to charge yourself up. Wow, that sounds awesome. Now, I consider myself kind of a naturally relaxed person for like, 12 minutes a day, so uh, how will that help? I mean, how will it, well, you know? For the rest of the day, energy can help you, for example, with a job interview or mm -hmm. simply to better sleep at night. Cardiac coherence has many benefits. Like, for example, you can practice it every day, and that will help you feel younger and in better shape. Actually, the impact on your blood pressure is almost the same as losing 20 pounds. Or wow. yet another example may be more feasible for you. If you just do one 10-minute session, it gives your immune system a, a boost, basically, for up to six hours. I think that's pretty cool. Nice. Wow. Not magic. Well, yeah, without booze or pills. Uh, wow, I feel re-energized, and Thank I am you. ready for the rest of the conference. All right. Thanks, Tommy, You're and uh, good luck with the dye job on your hair. Um, <laughs> no, uh, so thank I'll you. See you later. Sorry. And uh, right on. Nice suspenders. Good job, Tommy. Wow, I might take that home. So far, uh, we have seen creative worlds, we've seen creative worlds are evolving, uh, how the borders between interior and exterior worlds are now crashing together. And we've seen that the body itself is a brand new resource for video game creators. So let's find out more from the Ubisoft designers. As game developers, uh, controllers have always been our primary tool. Uh, now we are able to go beyond this traditional interaction. Your body, your hands, your eyes, your brain are becoming the controllers. Now, as you are in the game, we can actually make the game fit your very body. This body-centric approach not only brings accessibility to a whole new level, it also creates the feeling that the whole game revolves around you. It, there's a transition from small inputs on a controller to really what is a, a full body experience. Uh, with two players, it's not about you and, and your controller and me and my controller. It's, it's really about the dynamic that you're creating between the friends or the family in, in the room. And right there, you have an opportunity to take you know, the player's natural tendencies and make them relevant to the gameplay, creating a much more visceral and immersive game experience. It's a totally new experience to feel your inner signal in a game to feel how, when you breathe, how you can change your heartbeat, you can change your physique, your emotional state. The games will attune automatically with your, with your inner world. It, it will adapt to you, you will discover your own inner quest, and you will write page by page your own story. It is both a creative and a market opportunity to develop games where the mind and the body are controllers. In a word, it is uh, like observing your consumer in their everyday life become the main source of inspiration. And at the same time, you need to surprise them with what their body is able to achieve and their mind is able to perform. The designer doesn't tell you how to behave. 
your behavior tell us how to design. The player himself becomes a sort of design pillar, allowing the detection of finer movements and even intentions. There is nothing to be seen as a barrier, a bridge between the game and the player. You don't have to think about it. You just do. It's really changed the way I work. It's like going back to the beginning of my career. It's really exciting. It's the, I get to redo all the design from the beginning and improving on the, even the most basic things, including how do I move left or right? We are back to the origin of the games. You forget the screen, the player looks to themselves, the world becomes a game level, and your friends are your competitors. So now you've seen the guys behind the games, now let's check out two brand new Ubisoft titles developed for Kinect. Wow! Yeesh. You really need to be in shape to keep up with these games. So now for our live demo of Your Shape, Fitness Evolved, I am pleased to welcome the coach of Hollywood's finest, Michael George, along with Felicia Williams from Ubisoft Montreal. Come out, guys. See, they can run out. Look at that. <laughs> How you doing, Joe? Ow. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so, all right. Uh, hi, guys. I am uh, I'm really thrilled to be here today with our partner and Hollywood trainer, Michael George, to show you guys how we are using the Kinect technology to completely revolutionize the way that you think about the fitness genre. You know, when Ubisoft showed me this, I thought, wow, this opens up the door to so many new ways for people to experience fitness. Yes, I'm already sweating. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, <laughs> Michael, come join me on the cubes. And Felicia, you're on your own. All right. Take it away. <laughs> Let's do this. Hello. Come on in to your own personal gym. As you can see, I'll your shape fitness you evolved actually guidance. puts players physically inside of the game environment using Ubisoft's player projection technology. That's actually me in the virtual world, including this jacket. The feeling is incredible. You have to experience this. I'm able to freely play and interact and feel the magic of my environment. Let's go behind the magic and see what this technology has to really offer now, here. Let me scan your body into the gym. To create an accurate program tailored just for you, Felicia, we really need to take your measurements. Yeah. Careful. Do not fall in love with me. Great. I can see you perfectly now. You're on fire. <laughs> Five, six? Wait a minute. 
Backstage, you told me you were 5'9". <laughs> Because the game knows my body dimensions, everything is designed for me. To tailor menus and fitness routines to your exact shape. The menu is positioned so that I can reach it easily, and it even follows me around. So here's how the game works. You get the freedom to choose how you want to work out. You can choose a personal trainer for a workout tailored to your fitness goals. You can take a class like martial arts or yoga. And you can even play fun, family gym activities. Felicia, it looks like a friend of yours is sending you a uh, challenge online. So convenient. <laughs> the online services and available DLC will be endless. We know it's of high importance that consumers do not feel that they practice alone. Sending challenges to friends, comparing results, following your stats, and getting additional content tailored for you as part of the experience. And you can also brag about your results <laughs> and send challenges through all the available social networks and applications, such as Facebook, Twitter, and so on. Felicia, I say we accept this challenge. Welcome to Let's your do it. Training session. Let's start today with your favorite, the knee front. Ready? Three, two, one, begin. This game is, is able to provide specific feedback on every part of the body for every exercise. As Felicia plays, the instructions from the coach appear in the upper right corner so she can easily correct herself and get the most out of her workout. Now you've got it. Okay, that's plenty for the knee front. Let's do a little exercise called the squat punch. Here we go. Three, two, one, begin. In addition to low impact workouts, we also have higher intensity exercises. There you go, Felicia. Good job. Thanks. All right. That's enough for <laughs> Impressive. Now. Don't want to get punchy. It's nice because there's no creepy guy in the background lurking at most, like most gyms. <laughs> That's great. Okay, now let's go ahead and do some combat training. Two, one, and go. These innovative gym activities are great because they combine real fitness moves with fun and competitive games. So you can meet your personal fitness objectives without ever realizing how hard you're working. Again, it's going to be a thrill to have your friends and family challenging you to those extremely fun and competitive games. Awesome, Felicia, you're doing great. She's starting to scare me a little bit. Yeah. Very. Well it's like Jason <laughs> Bourne. Is that like that? <laughs> Good job, Felicia. So tell me, how are you going to celebrate? With some ice cream. Yes, you should. You worked out for three minutes. <sighs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, Michael and Felicia, it is in really impressive. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's, it's even better when you try it yourself, Joel. The experience might be mm. virtual. But the sweat is real. Yes, I can smell you from here. So uh, I'll let you cool off and bring some towels to clean up your sweat, Felicia. It's disgusting. So, no. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, me, I'll wring out your sweater. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Wow. Amazing. So running around the house with your friends, transforming your stress into positive energy, getting fit. Ubisoft's got everything you need to get healthy and have fun. And now, just like after a normal workout, we will look at some video of insane rabbits. Yes, that's what you all do. You know what I'm talking about. You love them. Check them out.
Yeah. All right. So you've seen the past with those crazy rabbits, and they are coming exclusively on the Wii. But what about the near future? I am really, really, really excited about this. I'm talking about one of my favorite things of all time, Ghost Recon Future Soldier. Get ready to see some new gadgets. The face of war is ever-changing, and technology will determine the outcome of all future wars. Armed with the latest military prototypes, the ghosts are inserted deep behind enemy lines. are the tip of the spear on the battlefield of tomorrow. The ghosts are the elite soldiers of the future. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Adrian Lacey and Rafael Morado from Ghost Recon, future soldier of Ubisoft Paris. Come on out, guys. Mr. McCann, nice Hello, to meet you. Hello, Adrian. Hello. Uh, so uh, tell me about this awesome game. <laughs> well, with, with the video, we wanted to just give you a little glimpse at how the battlefield of tomorrow is going to be impacted by technology. Uh, how it's going to impact the soldier and ultimately the ghosts. Yeah, I'm blown away. I, I can't express to you how excited I really am about this game. <laughs> I'm really excited. Okay. So I would not, I don't want to see my children grow up. I want to just play this. Uh, these soldiers look amazing. Are, uh, they are spec ops, right? They are spec ops. Uh, basically, they're a, a highly trained precision unit uh, equipped with the most advanced combat systems. Uh, what we've done for the game is we've basically, basically worked with uh, various organizations, agencies, military consultants, and so right. on and so forth to have a look at, at, at what's going to happen in the future. We've then taken those prototypes, integrated it as part of the gameplay, and then it gives the player a chance to sort of get a feel of tomorrow's Which soldier. army uh, around this world has invisible suits? Uh, you'd be surprised. Oh, There's really? many of them, actually. OK, yeah. all right. And it's coming out very soon. Just name a country. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, you guys? Australia? <laughs> what, USA? USA? OK, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and basically, from there, one of, the, one of the most invisible things that you've seen is the optical camouflage. Now, the optical camouflage is an interesting thing, simply because it adds a sort of tactical layer to the battlefield, because now you can pop up. You can disappear, and you can reposition yourself. So it's very right. accessible. And uh, the best way to see it is to show it in the game. Please, show okay. So us. Raphael's yes. going to launch the demo now. There's a few transitions in the game, uh, just in the interest of saving time. Uh, so when you see the black fades, that's just because we're skipping through the map. Right. Um, now you've got to try and attack a stronghold by the enemy and basically disrupt them, and most importantly is actually to capture your high-value target and hunt them down. That's, Euro the Euro that's not Miami Beach. <laughs> that's the European coast. All right. Yeah, what happened to the ocean? It's, it's gone away. All right. Global yeah, warming. Great. Kind of stuff. Wow. That needed the invisible suit for that. that was... <laughs> 
Heads up. The U.S. convoy is still en route. We have intel on both. So now you're going to start your approach. Here we go. Watch. Tango set up on your movement. Request the satellite again. Roger. So this is your new crosscom device. This gives you added situational awareness on a battlefield and most importantly lets you spot the enemy. 18 Tangos. Hold. Person of interest here. Daniel Kulinski, the Jacker Corp. Change of plans. We're taking this guy alive this time, 30. Understood. Moving. That guy had a family. You I had 200 feet. <laughs> so basically, now you're going to see one of the advantages of the optical camo because now for Ghost Recon and you to Ghost Recon is basically close quarter combat and physicality. Yeah. Can I please take this demo with me? Go, Zach. Take him. Roger. Heads up. We got thermals. That guy's not paying good enough attention. <laughs> his friend has a huge hole in his face right now. You want to have 200 feet. Hey, I got three tangos. Hold your fire. Stand by. We have a very good post. Sky Commander for this year. As you don't see on this particular day, we don't watch your chest minute. Can you see us? Yes. Now you're going to start your final approach with all your teammates on your person of interest. And you're going to work together as a team to capture. Be a warning, sweet. Pepper, take the one on the left. 30, take right. Kozak, get behind him and back him. Roger. Now we're going to show you how you get a different viewpoint of the battlefield. It's all about different angles for the special ops and how they deal with different situations. So now it's a bit more vertical and you look down on the battlefield. They got a ground job. Come on, come on, come on.
dear Lord. That is awesome. Wow. Jeez. You should just rename that game Awesome. Wow. Well, thank you guys for coming. That was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Well, um, I mean, I was going to say to you, Joel, just before I go, I wanted to tell you that this Ghost Recon is actually playable, the full campaign in four-player co-op for the first time. As wow. well as that, it's obviously available in 3D stereoscopic. I feel like you're lying to me now, and you're just <laughs> trying, because you're going to, this is amazing. Wow. And stereoscopic 3D and uh, HD, you know, the traditional one, the Lord. retro one. All right. Um, there you go, man. Santa Claus, everybody. Um, <laughs> thank you, guys. This thank you. Looks, oh, thank you very much. awesome. Man. Wow. Okay. Sheesh. Uh, advanced weaponry, massive explosions. Uh, that, that is great stuff, but man does not live on bread alone. You also need engine roaring, tire squealing, and high-speed chases. Check it out. Welcome, Martin Edmondson, ladies and gentlemen. Martin, creator of the game. Hello. Hi there. Nice to see you. It looks like from what we just saw, those two men do not like each other. Uh, no, that's right. They have a, there's quite a history between those two characters. Um, the, uh, basically, I mean, they're, uh, we've very much gone back to the roots of the game. That history is very important to us. So. Uh, the, we've gone back to the roots of what made that original drive game such a unique experience. So the first thing we've done is to bring back John Tanner. He's the undercover cop that we played in the first game in Driver 1. He's a little older, a little more hard-bitten. And uh, we've also brought back his arch enemy from the, the, the second game, Driver 2, Charles Jericho. Yes. And this sets us up for a relentless manhunt between these two historic characters. Now, what I'm going to do now is show you a, a video taken from gameplay that uh, shows just a few key moments from the action from the E3 build of Driver San Francisco. And talking about going back to the roots, we've returned the action to Driver 1's San Francisco, obviously, one of the most iconic car chase cities of all time, made famous in the original Bullet movie. So being all about city car chasing, driver, we're going to go straight into the action here. A car chase between Tanner and Jericho. So 
of also brought back the, uh, the famous alleyways from driver one stacked high with garbage to smash through, bursting back onto the streets. That's all back. We've worked really hard on the handling to bring back that driver one feel of the handling, the 70s movie car chase feel of the big power out uh, tail out slides. And you'll notice also for the first time in driver's history, real licensed cars, over 100, well over 100, and we do damage them. So we're using the driver's view here. This is a view used in many of the 70s car chase movies like Bullet and French Connection that uh, inspired the original game. For the car buffs out there, he's uh, driving his own car, 1970s Dodge Challenger RT. Now that looks like the end of uh, Tanner's chase. And whilst Jericho gets away, I want to show you this. It's a brand new, innovative, and a game-changing feature, actually, that we call Shift. Now, to put this in context, what's happened earlier on in the game is that Tanner has been involved in a serious incident, which has put him into a coma. This is deeply integrated into the story. He does not realize he's in a coma. He just thinks he's had a lucky escape and ended up with this quite amazing ability to oh, yeah. be choose over the, the city like this. He can identify the cars. He's a car nut choose himself, the neon. I'm and he can shift instantaneously into any vehicle. Yeah. And at the simplest level, we can have a lot of fun with this. We can do things like uh, shifting out into other vehicles just to rapidly change direction, like this. We can also set up crashes, obviously, if we want to. By the way, this is not an unlimited ability. It must be charged. And it also upgrades throughout the game. Here we can see we can pull higher. We can see more of the city, more of the vehicles in the world. And ultimately, it upgrades to the point where we can see the whole city in its entirety. Truly massive driving environment, 208 miles of very diverse roads. And it's a city full of life and full of missions. And shift is your key to accessing these missions. Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Now there's, uh, thank you. There's so much more to Driver San Francisco. There's so much more to shift, especially when you get into the tactics and the missions. And to experience that, I'd like to invite you down to the Ubisoft stand where you can have a, a hands-on with both single-player and multiplayer Driver San Francisco. And I can tell you that the multiplayer uh, is absolutely transformed uh, your perception of what a multiplayer driving game can be with the shift ability. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope we see you down at the stand where we can actually give you the controller. Wow, thanks, Martin. Thank you. I will come down Cheers. for 14 hours. Wow, uh, today you've traveled to Renaissance Rome and to the exciting landscape of San Francisco. You've tested the weapons of the future and got your mind and body in shape thanks to new technologies. With Ubisoft's lineup, you can feel the music, feel the history, feel the adrenaline, feel the chase, feel the calm, feel the sweat, feel the trenches, feel the speed. I think it's pretty clear these are games you can feel. Now the time has come to welcome the CEO of Ubisoft himself, Mr. Yves Germont. Yves? Hello. Hello. Yves, there. Thank you. Go ahead. So I'm very happy you were able to come today. And as you have been able to see, we have great games this year. We have been working hard, putting lots of uh, energy to, to come with those games. So all those teams have done, a, I hope, a job that you like. So now I wanted to show you three new projects that we have been working on. The first one is from uh, Eric Chai. It's Dust. He has been working on a project for digital distribution, so it will be available on 360, uh, Xbox Live, and PSN. So let's look at this video. You will tell me what you think. Once. My people possessed the knowledge to survive and flourish in the face of nature's relentless aggressions. We had evolved our mastery of the elemental forces and passed this sacred knowledge down through generations so that our children and our children's children would know how to canalize 
and contain the forces of the natural world. But those mighty ancestral powers are long gone, and today, my people live on the verge of extinction. It falls to me to guide them. Together we must reclaim our powerful heritage, safeguard this primordial knowledge for all and forever, or watch as our whole world crumbles into dust. I, I love this game. I think it will be very good. The second project I wanted to speak with you about is uh, a project that Michel Ancel is taking care of. I know you, he's working also on all of the, lots of other projects, but this one is very important. He has decided to create tools that will allow all the creators in the world, coming from the industry or coming from outside the industry, to create games that will be able to be sold digitally. So this is really a good set of tools that you, all the creators in the world will be able to use. So I want you to watch uh, this video and uh, see what we can do. Some time ago at Ubisoft, we set out to imagine the tools that would bring the fun of interactive creation to artists. Tools that would allow free experimentation alone or in small groups, regardless of experience or artistic domain. Thanks to these new tools, each of the artists creates a unique and interactive universe. Given all of this creative potential, a small group of artists chose to breathe life into a character in a world you all know so well once again. Long ago, the primordial forest, deep and mysterious, witnessed the birth of a man. Uh, a vegetable. No, no, no. Ah, a thingamajig. Conjured from the magnificent moonbeams of the second summer solstice, woven together by us, the nymphs, destined to preserve the equilibrium of the sacred universe, the one we call Rayman, proved himself to be absolutely hey. unmanageable. An utter loss of face for the magic peoples, of course. All the same, while in the midst of all kinds of stupidity, Raymond makes a troubling encounter. He discovers his double, his blood brother, his id. Soon enough, they are sharing their conception of life in polite society, their taste in music, dance, and the arts in general. And thus, a friendship grew to legend and a legend grew to myth. Nothing could keep these two apart. Almost nothing. So as you can see, Rayman is back, and uh, those tools have been very useful to create this uh, product. Only five people have been working on this project. So now the third product I wanted to tell you about is actually a platform. Last year, we told you about a platform we wanted to create with Uplay. Now we expect to have more than 10 million customers using Uplay at the end of the year. So we've decided to continue to create platforms, and the first one is is a new platform from Nadeo. And this platform, Mania Planet, is actually going to put you in the center of a world, and you will be able to create, with the tools that are there, create uh, either tracks or 
lots of uh, new uh, gameplay that you will be able to use. And I, I'm going to show you the video now so you can see exactly what this platform is going to give you. So what about user-powered gaming? Since 2003, Nadeo has been innovating this concept with Track Mania, a racing game where anyone can easily create a map and millions can play it. It gave us thousands of new tracks every day. With easy creation tools, Trackmania gave the power to users to enjoy an essentially infinite gaming experience. In seven years, over 10 million people joined the Trackmania community. Trackmania is now the number one worldwide racing PC game. Now it's time to empower you to create the future of gaming on PC. Welcome to Mania Planet, the world's first user-powered PC gaming zone. So what does all this mean? In Mania Planet, you can play your three most popular genres, FPS, Racer, and RPG. You'll join one community with a unified set of user-friendly tools, one map editor, one way of sharing, one matchmaking system. You can play however you like, Create, use others' creations, play solo, with friends, or in competition. One place, real games for real gamers. The possibilities of entertainment are infinite. Mania Planet. Get your ticket for the first user-powered, user-empowered PC gaming planet. Mania Planet. Track Mania 2 beta test in Q4 2010. Shoot Mania beta test in Q1 2011. Quest Mania beta coming soon. Me? So those were the three projects I wanted to, to speak with you about. And uh, we'll be happy to see you at E3. But before I go, I have a last uh, announcement to, to give. In fact, I'm very happy because we've signed a legend. We've been able to, to work with uh, a team to prepare a product that I'm sure you will love. This game is going to be launched at the end of the year. And when you will see the guys performing on the, on the show, what will be important for you to consider is as you will be able to learn how to do those moves, you will be able to learn them from somebody who has done it the best. So look at what at these, at these people, what they do, and think that with the technology that is available today, you will be able to learn how to be as good as those guys or even better. So watch it. Thank you.
Yeah! Dancing to Michael Jackson's Beat It, Kento, Marys, Reno, Graham, Tyne, and Daniel from Michael Jackson's This Is It, everybody. Thank you, guys. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you for coming, everyone. I hope you get more stuff to put in your bags. We'll see you next year. Good night. All right.